In this video, we are going to talk about banked curves. So we've already done some problems where a car is going around a curve and the ground is level, it's horizontal. And so the frictional force is the only force acting towards the center of the circle and therefore the only centripetal force. But in real life, if we had all of our curves on level surfaces, we'd have to slow down a whole lot more than we do to take those curves, especially on highways where you're going fast. If you've ever watched a NASCAR race, you'll notice that in the curves on the NASCAR uh, tracks, they are extremely banked. They're banked they're, the angle is really, really large. And the reason that we do that is to um, have some of the normal force act as a centripetal force so that we can turn. We learned that our uh, equation for <laughs> our equation for centripetal force is or radial force, same thing, mass times velocity squared over r. So if we um, want to increase the velocity, we have to increase the force in order to make the turn at a constant radius. So um, this is one way to do that, to bank the curve where you have part of your normal force increases your centripetal force, and then that allows you to go through the curve at a faster pace. So let's think about this car on the curve. So the car is traveling towards us, and it's staying at the same like horizontal level as it goes around the curve at a constant speed. I can do some things. What's that word? I want to go here, right here. Um, and one thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw an x and y axis. And the x and y axis for, for these problems is not going to be tilted. So it's not like the inclined plane problems that we've done before where we tilt the axes because when we tilt the axes for inclined plane problems, the reason we tilt them is because the object is accelerating or moving down the incline. So we want to put one of our axes parallel to the incline so that we have less math to do. But in this case, the center of, our, of the circle for the, the car is right here. It's coming towards us and it's going in a level circle where the center is right here. So this is center of circle. So we don't want to tilt the axes because we want one of our net forces to be pointed towards the center. And if we tilt the axes, our math gets uh, all, all over the place. OK, so let's draw a force diagram for the car. And we're going to do it without friction for this first time. So um, we're going to pretend that it's snowy or icy or maybe wet and there's no friction. So we have our force of gravity acting down. And then we have our normal force acting perpendicular to the surface. So when we split this up into components, we are going to do it like this. We're going to have the force normal in the y direction and the force normal in the x direction. All right, so now if we look at this conceptually, our normal force in the y direction is going to be opposite of our gravitational force. And those are going to be equal to each other because the car is not accelerating in the y direction. It's only accelerating in the x direction. And it's going at a constant speed, but it's turning in the x direction. So we have to have a net force towards the center of the circle, and that's going to be our normal force in the x direction. So let's write some net force equations to start off. All right, so we have some of the forces in the x direction is just equal to the normal force in the x direction. And then we would set this equal to mv squared over r. And that would be our normal force in the x direction. Let's figure out where our thetas are here. So um, I'm just going to sketch this force diagram right here. It's a little bit easier to see the thetas when you put the force diagram on the incline. So if we had force of gravity here and the normal force here, 
and we have this line here and this line here for x and y of normal force, then we can see that this angle right here is 90 minus theta. And then we know that this is a 90 degree angle here. And since um, sorry, I just want to double check to make sure that I am doing this right. Okay, so this right here is going to be our theta. Um, but I'm not showing you that right here, am I? Uh, okay, so these angles right here are the same. Um, this angle here and this angle here are 90 minus theta. And then this is a 90 degree angle right here. So if this one is 90 minus theta, then this one must be theta. There we go. Okay, I got lost in my... 90 degrees there a little bit, but that's why this one is theta. Okay, so um, normal force in the x direction is going to be the normal force times the sine of theta. And then you could solve for things depending on what you know, but that's going to be your equation there. And so also, just let me put a note here for the notes that this is um, if friction is zero. So sometimes you might have a problem where it says the slope is designed for a certain speed. Um, and when it's designed for a certain speed, that means that if there were snow and ice on the, on the ramp, we could still make the curve at that speed. So that's, this is where you would apply the, the force of friction. And then we could also do a net force equation for the y direction, so net force in the y direction would equal the normal force in the y direction um, plus the force of gravity. And this is going to be equal to zero. So normal force in the y direction is going to be Fn times the cosine of theta. And then we would subtract mg because force of gravity is acting in the negative direction. And so now I could solve for normal force by adding mg over and then dividing by cosine theta. And then I could plug that into here, which is probably what you would need to do. mv squared over r equals mg over cosine theta times sine theta. So then that reduces to tangent theta. And like I said, I didn't really make a problem, so I'm just kind of going through what you could do. Um, so this is mg tan theta. And so now we could solve for, oh, notice the masses cancel. And then we could solve for theta, or we could solve for velocity, um, depending on what you were given in the problem. Another version of this problem is to have friction. So I'm going to just clone this page, and I'm going to make some adjustments here to what we did, because if you have friction, it becomes even more complicated. And it's kind of overwhelming seeming at first. OK. So oh, no, I didn't want to erase my car. OK. <laughs> All right, good thing there's an undo button. All right, so I'm going to add um, another force. I'm going to add the force of friction. And the force of friction is going to act this way, down the slope. So this is my force of friction. And I'm going to get rid of this. So friction acts down the slope, and it, it aids in keeping the car in the circular path. So um, part of friction acts in the x direction. So this is force of friction in the x. 
and part of friction acts in the y direction. So this is force of friction in the y direction. And once again, this is theta. I think it's pretty easy to see that this is theta. And, um, and so now when we write our net force equations, we have net force in the x direction equals force of friction in the x direction plus normal force in the x direction. And then net force in the y direction is equal to, I forgot my vector symbols, is equal to force normal in the y direction plus force friction in the y direction plus force of gravity. So we can apply the same methods that we did before. It gets a little bit trickier though because we just have more unknowns, right? So this is still mv squared over r. And both of these are acting in the same direction. So your force of friction is going to be mu times the normal force. And the x component is going to be times the cosine of theta plus the normal force in the x direction is still going to be normal force times the sine of theta. And then your net force in the y direction is 0. Your normal force in the y direction is Fn times the cosine of theta. Your frictional force in the y direction is negative because it's acting in the negative direction, so I'm going to subtract it. And that's going to be force of friction, which is mu times the normal force times the sine of theta. And then gravity x in the negative direction, so that is minus mg. So from here, you could be given theta and have to solve for normal force, or um, you might have to solve for theta, or you might have to solve for velocity. But we have um, lots of similar things in here that are unknown, like you have normal force in all of these terms. So we could combine them somehow and um, work through the problem. But I just wanted to get you started on those types of problems.